You know, I always wanted to, to be able to lead Chicago Bulls from the bottom to the top. The motivation was to show people that the first time wasn't a fluke, that we were going to be on top for a long period of time, and this is a way to, to uh, put a stamp on that, and to do it twice, give us some legitimacy to the franchise. And let the celebration begin here in the Windy City. The Bulls have repeated. A couple teams, the Lakers and Detroit, both were in situations where they could have won three in a row. This is our opportunity to show that we can do something that Magic Johnson and Detroit Pistons never did. For the third year, Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls have climbed the Mount Olympus of the NBA. To get back on top, and to do it in a fashion that you alleviate all the questions that people had about your skills and your leadership qualities, and to, you know, more or less just say, hey, we're back. After a two-year absence, the Chicago Bulls have regained the NBA throne. It's getting tougher just from facing all the different challenges of staying on top. It's like the king of the hill. I mean, everybody's going to be coming at you and trying to knock you off. But each time you win, it's more gratifying, you know, that you withstood all the challenges and yet here you are again, right back on top. So we look forward to doing that again. Fresh off last year's championship and an NBA record, 72 wins. The Chicago Bulls seem to have little left to prove as they entered the 1996-97 season. We tried to take some pressure off our team, so we started out very, very slow this year. Single practices and training camp, some days off, and we said, don't worry about getting off to a great start. And we got off to the best start we've ever had as a franchise. Harper to Jordan. Lead. Chicago beginning to kick on all cylinders now. Scotty in the middle. Oh, yeah, Scotty hard to the basket. That is red hot. MJ's on that side. Oh, yes, yeah, sir. A great look. Come on, Jordan. Bushler and Jordan take it away. Jordan. Oh, he did give it to him ultimately. Thanks, oh, what a great play by Scotty. The fans in this building loving it. Michael in backcourt with four, with three, with one. The shot is good, but now the That's good, baby. Michael got it. It's going to be that kind of afternoon for MJ. <laughs> the Bulls opened the season with an amazing 17 and 1. And as always, the main catalysts were Michael Jordan and Scotty Pippen. Everything has been special because we've tried to take it to a higher level to become the greatest duo to ever play the game. Michael was capable of uh, incorporating Scotty's abilities and, you know, telling him sometimes you got to help me out and some nights I'm not going to have it. I'll help you out if you don't have it and we'll, we'll tag team this thing together. These guys have played together so long, they know every move that they're going to make. When I walked away from the game for two years, Scotty was exposed to what I had to deal with. So when I came back, there was a certain understanding and we grew close. And you can see that within the way that we play. And with their two leaders more in sync than ever, the Bulls continued their blazing start. They had a league best record of 42 and six entering All-Star Weekend where Jordan and Pippen were honored as two of the league's 50 greatest players. Let us salute together the greatest NBA players of all time. And fittingly, they would share an historic moment. Here's Jordan with an opportunity. Has it been in? There it is. Triple double from Michael Jordan. The first ever in the history of the NBA All Star game. But it wasn't only Chicago's superstars who had a chance to shine. Steve Hurt is on fire. He is on he fire. He better not miss. This is the biggest, the money ball. Oh, yes. And this year's All Star Weekend three point shooting champion, Steve Kerr. Kerr highlighted the importance of the Bulls' role players, who each make their own contribution to the team's success. I think a lot of it is Phil's philosophy of using the bench, using all 12 guys, uh, having everybody feel like a big part of it, uh, and as a result, you know, kind of making the team more than just the sum of its parts. Oh, yeah. There are so many outstanding role players on this Chicago Bull team. When players have something to offer a team, 
um, a coach has to recognize their individual talents and what they can give to a basketball club. So I like to make everybody feel like they have a role that they can play on this team. Beautifully done. Unselfish teamwork. When you feel wanted and you feel needed, it inspires you to play better, thus making you more wanted and more needed. With their unique blend of talent and teamwork, the Bulls were stampeding their way through the season and having fun doing it. Sensational! Bounce pass, great pass to Randy Brown. Inside Dennis, great pass to oh, Luke yes. who slams it. Rodman looking long, throws it to Tony. It's on line! Hello, Tony! Curd to Rodman. Oh, there it the is. Back door to Pip on the reverse. Yes! And Luke, he did not have the handle, but somehow made it go. 44 for Pippen, career high! Oh, oh yeah. That's inside. Jason putting on a show for the fans here. Rodman! Oh. Let it fly, let it fly. Nice. Great pass. Nicely done. Cheap, cheap. Look. Oh. Love it. Give it back. Hammer down for the Chief. How about that? Pippen to Jordan. Time winding down for the win. Yeah! You can't believe it. He does it again. Michael Jordan. A game winner. Nick the Butler. Jason with a steal. Fix it up. See if he can go all the way. Caffey goes down off the game. Yeah, he got it counted and he fouled. What a ball game for Jason Caffey. But as the season entered its final weeks, the joy that it seemed to envelop the Bulls would now begin to evaporate. They encountered the first major roadblocks in their drive to repeat as champions, losing several of their key players to injuries. Everything, I guess, working against us because we had a lot of injuries and guys out of the lineup here and there, and it was tough. To fill the void, the Bulls signed free agent Brian Williams, who had not played all season. Williams, he'll go up inside this ah. minute, point blank range. You gotta finish that play. The team that had been a juggernaut all season suddenly begun to falter. We had a bunch of guys on the floor that hadn't played together, and the chemistry and the feeling that we've had on the court wasn't there, and we struggled. Five left, Jordan for the tie, didn't happen. Cavaliers got it done. Fewest points by a Chicago basketball club since way back on February 2nd, 1995. What had begun with all the makings of another record-setting season had ended in doubt, and the timing could not have been worse. Suddenly, you know, our season was tilted and ajar, and we never really had an attack from the very last month. You know, it was going to be a push to just get going in the playoffs. Basketball at the United Center as we get the playoffs underway in round one, game one. Determined to put their late season slump behind them, the Bulls opened the playoffs against a young and hungry Washington Bullet team, out to make a bold statement against the defending champions. Howard kept it alive. Ross oh. oh. controlling the offensive for his weapon of the hook. But in game one, Washington's hopes of an upset would be snuffed out by the Bulls' suffocating defense. Five minutes. Howard pumps it out. Murray. Blocked again. Rodman dives for it. 24. Well, this is playoff defense at its best. Strickland. Murray comes over the back. Oh, yeah. Hangs on. Up the floor, scouting for, oh, beautiful the basket. Felt like that, you know, our defense was the key tonight, and that's what you need in the playoffs. And we had to put on our defense to kind of uh, pull this one off. Undaunted, the confident Bullets stayed close again in game two, but they had no answer for the Bulls' leader, who was simply unstoppable. It's going to be that kind of afternoon for MJ. 
He's putting on a show here. I'm telling you, this has been some kind of offensive performance by Michael Jordan. He's adding to the legend today. Jordan would burn the bullets for 55 points and carry the Bulls to victory in spectacular style, scoring from any angle at any time. One of the extraordinary playoff performances in the history of the NBA. I got into that zone, if you want to call it, and I couldn't get out. You know, when uh, I apologize to Tex after the game. Yeah, I didn't know. <laughs> Sorry about the triangle text. I kind of I kind of forgot about the triangle and you know I mean once I got in that mood I just couldn't turn it off. As the Bulls arrived to DC for game 3, Jordan knew it wasn't going to be easy to close out the Bullets on their home floor. It's going to be hard. I mean this team's going to be fighting with their backs to the wall and nothing's going to come easy so we have to be ready and have to be follow our game plan and stick with it. You still in the zone? I don't know. I see my first shot. The Bullets, as expected, would not go quietly. They had the champs on the ropes late in Game 3. We pounds it down, 17 or 18. The field say, hey, we got these guys right where we want. Don't worry about anything. We come back and win those games. The guys on our team just know how to win. Charging back from a nine-point deficit in the final five minutes, the Bulls still found themselves in need of some last-second heroics. 95-94, Bullets by one. Michael off the dribble, darts to the lane, went in the air, lost it. Scotty got it back. Hip and a drive, good, and the yes, dunk it is it. And the Bulls win it, and the go Bullets home. go home. Michael Jordan scoring 14 in the fourth quarter, and a tremendous game as the Chicago Bulls have swept the Washington Bullets in three straight. Lying in wait in the second round were the Atlanta Hawks, a team eager to shatter the Bulls' championship mystique. And as the series began, Chicago's doubts resurfaced as they once again seemed vulnerable. The Atlanta Hawks playing energized basketball and causing problems for Bill Jackson. Bulls really look out of sorts right now. The aggressive Atlanta Hawks quickly proved they were not in awe of the Great Bulls dynasty. Hip dunk is a beauty by Matumbo. Well, the Bulls just look dispirited now. They look like their hearts aren't even in this. Handing Chicago its first home playoff loss in 14 games, Atlanta would steal the home court advantage. Under 30 seconds to go and five on the shot clock and a runner by Steve Smith. And that may do it for the Atlanta Hawks. The Atlanta Hawks stun the Chicago Bulls here in game two. And we're just kind of... Uh down for his energy wise we're not executing but unless we do the things that we've done all season to get 69 wins and we're not going to pull another win out of this series and in atlanta the hawks gained even more confidence taking an early lead in game three all the atlanta fans were going crazy we were down 10 midway through the second quarter and we were a little unsure of ourselves we just didn't quite have it Smith, wide open left side. The three's good. Atlanta, they are jacked up as they have dominated this game. There is great concern on the part of the Chicago Bulls. Well, we just weren't playing Bulls basketball, and it was tough. But Michael and Scotty stepped up and showed great leadership, and, and we started to get things rolling a little bit. As they had done so many times before, Jordan and Pippen would bring the Bulls back. The Bulls have suddenly shown some life. Jordan. Michael Jordan able to slip away. Lead for Michael. MJ catches back to Pippen running in lay yes. on. The Bulls that are now turning it up a little bit. The first game of Atlanta. I think we really needed uh, Scotty and Michael, the leaders of the team, are always there and they pushing us. And the rest of the Bulls would follow MJ and Pippen's lead. Lead pass Pippen. Scotty for Brian Williams and he dunked it. Tony three. Tony fires. Star! Oh, wow! New coach. Wow. The Bulls had now broken the game open, and it was left to Jordan to provide the finishing touch, and he delivered. Oh. Handed wrap around. Michael. Good for Michael Jordan. The Hawks appearing to have run out of gas. Steal by Jordan. Bulls would see this game as a turning point in this second round series. We seemed to, to have a breakthrough and we went on to a 20 point victory. Well, I think we, we sort of 
broke through some barriers there and, and started to play much better after that game. The rejuvenated Bulls would now finish off Atlanta. Rodman for three. The Bulls on fire again. They're just picking oh, the man. box apart now. Three again. Oh, it. Three. The energy, everything has been picked up by the Bulls. Outstanding oh, pass. Oh, pass by Dennis. Wow. That's could be the nail in the coffin. Emphatically closing out the series, Jordan would send one final message to the sinking Hawks. MJ. Oh, he did it. Michael shakes the finger, but he finally got his dunk on Mount Matumbo. He said, I never dunked on him. Mike, come on, man. You can't be for me. You haven't got me yet. I said, well, I'm going to eventually get you before I leave the game. And uh, tonight was, was a great time for it. Hi again, everybody, and welcome once again to Bulls basketball. The Bulls and the Miami Heat about set to square off here at the United Center. The crowd is excited. This ought to be a fun series. Throughout the year, one team we never wanted to lose it was Miami. Over the season, of uh, you know, really developed a real strong rivalry with them. Their physical play really brings out the best in us. And the Bulls would counter Miami's muscle with their own overpowering display of defense. Pippen goes for the steal, and then Jordan with the block. Rebound, morning knocked out, no good. Morning again, short. Look was big on that defensive play. I don't think that people really realize how well the Chicago Bulls can defend. Miami was a big test for us, but uh, our guys, you know, showed that they could step up and play, you know, the tremendous D. Three straight turnovers. Backs it in. Back inside. Uh, Dennis with a block. We know at one stage during the basketball game that we're going to just hold you down. Smothering the heat, Chicago captured the first two games and rode their wave of momentum right into Miami where their opportunistic defense would get them off and running, and they never looked back. Rodman, beauty. Oh, push for a basket, free throw coming. Now Jordan with the move on Hardaway. And Scotty Pippen able to put it down. Blowing out the heat in their own building, the Bulls had taken a firm grip on the series and learned some valuable lessons in the process. Gonna come up over the top of him. The shot's good. We figured out how to not go macho for macho against them, but, you know, play within yourself, play your game, meet their in intensity, but don't let them take you out of what you're trying to do on the court. Having been embarrassed by the Bulls, Miami was in desperate need of a rallying cry for game four, and they would get it from their leader, Alonzo Mourning. We will win on Monday. We're gonna win on Monday. The Heat would take command right from the start with Morning eager to deliver on his bold guarantee. That's what the Miami Heat have been looking for. Alonzo's open left side, slams it in. This is just what the Chicago Bulls wanted to stop in this whole series. We felt they tried to take our manhood, they beat us up, they pounded on us. Heat aren't going away without a fight. Alonzo Morning was doing a lot of talking the entire series. And when he elbowed Scotty and Scotty got that bump on his head, I think Michael kind of took it personally. And I think that set Michael off. So when he came back into practice after that weekend on Tuesday, he said, guys, this one's a personal test. When we come out there today, I want this game to be a grudge match. It's personal, man. I've been saved. You guys go out and play with a lot of intensity, a lot of heart. Let's go. And from the beginning, the greatest of all time, Michael Jordan, would serve notice to the Heat that he was on a personal mission. Who's Jordan? Score it for Michael Jordan. Jordan off the head. Fence. Jordan with the dribble. Pull up for Sean Leonard. Yes! Michael Jordan is on fire. And even though Scottie Pippen would be forced out of the game early with an injured foot, the rest of the Bulls' supporting cast would help Michael finish his mission. Dennis Rodman, shot clock winding down. Let's go with the three. Bush for us there. The Chicago bench. Double job. Happy. Strong throw. Oh, happy with the stop. Took it to the hoop and threw down a slammer. Their collective championship level will had lifted them once more. Oh, man. Look at Tony. He is pumped up. And with their emotional victory, the Bulls would convincingly wrap up the series and steamroll their way to the finals, beating the Heat in five games. Crowd is on its feet. The Bulls are going to the finals. Yes, sir. It's good to be the conference champions, but you know, to come up short doesn't really mean nothing. You know, we want to get all the way to the ring and you know make it five. 
Awaiting the Bulls in the finals were MVP Carl Malone, John Stockton, and the Utah Jazz, who had finally become the Western Conference champions. John Stockton sends the Utah Jazz to the NBA final. Congratulations, Carl Malone, 1996-97, NBA most valuable player. Carl Malone getting MVP. I'm not saying he wasn't deserving of it. All I'm saying is that that fueled the fire in me and said, okay. You think he's the MVP? Okay, fine, no problem. Jordan took offense by Malone getting the MVP over him. As always, it gave him extra motivation. On the other hand, Malone and the Jazz were confident they can dethrone the four-time champions, Bulls. We didn't just come here just to show up. We came here to play, and, and uh, as long as we as a team believe in ourselves and believe that we can beat these guys, we can. Moreover, to Jordan, the MVP award wasn't the only vengeance he had in his list when facing the Jazz. Brian Russell, when I was playing baseball, Utah was in town to play the Bulls. I go over and say hello to John and Carl. And this kid, Brian Russell, comes up to me and said, man, why you quit? Why you quit? Man, you knew I could guard your ass. I couldn't, you, you had to quit. I said, Carl, you need to talk to this dude, man. But from that point on, he's been on my list. Hi again, everybody, and welcome to Chicago for the NBA World Championship Game 1. It should be a dandy. Yeah, we're taking it. We're taking it. They're going to win it tonight. Go Trying to win one for the thumb. The fifth time in seven years. And now they go against the amazing Utah Jazz with John Stockton and Carl Malone. Game 1, Pilgrim. Game 1, Pilgrim. You couldn't have asked for a, a better matchup, especially with Sloan's ties to Chicago. How you doing, Zell? How you doing? And it's hard to go against Michael Jordan and home court advantage, but with a subpar Scottie Pippen, I think Utah has an excellent chance to grab one of these first two games. Troll Stockton, that means everybody get your eye on him. Make sure you see him where he's at on the court. Don't get the ball to him right away. This is what you work hard for. What time is it? Game time! Woo! Since the dawn of spring, the Utah Jazz have been the best basketball team in the NBA. They're ready, and there's no excuses from Utah. Congratulations. This series features the NBA's most valuable player and the guy who many feel should have won this year's MVP award. Relax. I'm not going to fool you. I'm not going to fool you. Relax. 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 And from the beginning, the Utah Jazz were determined to make it clear that they belonged on the NBA's biggest stage. That's exactly the type of ball that Utah has to play. Carl Malone, right about right, but a follow away 15 footer by the mailman, good! As Utah grabbed an early lead, the Bulls struggled to chip away the rust of a five-day layoff. The Bulls are off to a very shaky start. It's Bill Jackson, a little upset that the team didn't come out with more intensity. Let's get ourselves together on this. the bomb. And in typical Chicago fashion, it was the Bulls' tenacious defense that provided them with a spark. And the rebound handled by Carr. Traveling violations. What a play by Hopper. Same thing you get, John. But don't I don't want to hear that. Same thing you get. The Jazz clung to a slim lead at halftime as Game 1 evolved into a classic battle with the superstars from each team rising to the challenge. Played by the rookie Anderson. Trying to pull it up, fade away, 14 footers. Good, Michael. Come on! Fight for a ball! Lead for the ball! Off the pick and roll! Yeah! Yeah, boy! Let go, go! The Bulls, however, would get an unexpected lift from a determined but injured Scottie Pippen. Oh, Scottie Pippen with a good looking. Three-point shot. Pippen is showing some signs despite the foot injury. Watches to the top. Taken away by Pippen who blocked Russell. An easy layup. The place will explode. Scotty Pippen has really sorry now. Jordan putting moves on Isley and pops it out. Pippen for three. Yes! Pippen with the three-point bomb. What an incredible basketball game. This is it, my man. This is what you work hard for. Have fun. In the closing minutes, with the outcome hanging in the balance, the stage was set for a dramatic finish, and each team's leading men would again rise to the occasion. They've got it right there, back to the basket. The the ball, down fight. low, left into Jordan. Jordan box in. One hold a sec. Michael left to right. Fall away. 15 foot. Good. Chicago leads. John needs to play with poles here. Goes right side. Oh, with the opening. Oh, with 
with the fly. The Jazz lead 79-78. Three bottom by Hoffer. Back to Pippen for three. Oh. Pippen's three. Leads a good. Pippen with a three. It's 81-79. It what can't get any game. better than this. Stop to download and try. Back to stop. Three pointer. Yes. At 82. Stopped it. Off the dribble. Stopped it. Top of the key. Stopped it. Jacks won and missed it. Long rebound. Malone. Malone's got it. Nine seconds. There's a loose ball foul. It's on Rodman. That puts Carl Malone on the line with a game tied at 82. Moments before Carl Malone went to the line in an attempt to give the Jazz the lead, Scottie Pippen whispered some words in Malone ears. Words that will be written in the basketball history books forever. I just walked by and said, the mailman don't deliver on Sunday. To this day, I think that's the greatest line in basketball. Hello now with the first free throw. Takes his time. The crowd frantic behind the glass. No, he missed it. It ran down. One more for Carl Malone. Nine seconds left in this game. Just make sure you follow through and don't short arm him. He misses. You've got to get this rebound. Malone. Oh, he missed the ball. Rebound of my throat. At the ball. Take the time out. Bulls get a last chance. Seven and five tenths left. What do you think Phil Jackson is thinking about? Will it automatically be Michael Jordan? I think it'll go to Michael Jordan and then let him create. Bulls basketball and a chance to win it right here. Two coaches got the ball inbounds from Pippen, and here is Michael. Four on the shot clock now. Keeps it on the dribble. Russell's there. MJ, top of the circle. Against Russell, Michael, Hanks, fire, score! Yeah. Knocked it in, Bulls win! He knocked it in at the buzzer, Bulls win! How many times has he done that? It is all over! The Chicago Bulls have won at the buzzer! If somebody asked you to name your three favorite, or the three you remember best? 1982 is easy. Uh, Cleveland is certainly easy. It's only two I can remember. I'm getting now, I guess. I've had so many, I can't even remember them all. <laughs> the city of Chicago, Illinois, on a beautiful 68-degree spring-like day. It's been 72 hours since Michael Jordan performed the latest in a career filled with heroics. And players and fans have waited anxiously for this Game 2 of the best of seven. After their heartbreaking loss in Game 1, the Jazz looked to bounce back. But in game two, they'd face a Chicago team that was hitting on all cylinders. Jordan, again. Chicago coming down, up a couple of field goals, and greedy for more. And gets inside a poster tag. Chicago playing like the champions. Michael the assist, turn oh, up the oh, energy. Oh, what a beginning. It's all falling apart for the Jazz right now. 20 second timeout. They're just gonna have to totally regroup. Reeling from Chicago's onslaught, the Jazz try to fight their way back. Stockton, look at the Carmelo. Crowd's got a twist right. Look at score. Utah, battling away. Oh, Mars from way downtown. Stop, yeah. And who knows what's going to happen here. The Bulls, though, had all the answers, and they would find a way to stop the Utah surge. Screen across, slip with Hornacek set back. Playing Hornacek, set, Stockton and Malone in a triangle. Any hopes of a jazz rally quickly faded as their tuned offense completely shut down by the dominating Bulls. Up top to Malone, Carl dumped inside, Russell's all alone, blocked oh! by Pippen. It is Chicago's defense which is authoring the story here in game two. Malone rejected, recovered by Anderson. Help! No, no shot! No shot! 24 second violation. The defense has been suffocating. The Jazz can't get anything on. When you got incredibly agile, active, long arm defenders, you can really commit to the ball. And we had guys just jumping the ball, hand on Stockton or Malone or whoever it was that had the ball, and making it hard for them to get anywhere with their offense, and it stifled them. Finishing one assist shy of a triple-double, the 
greatest of all time, Michael Jordan, would again turn the finals into his own personal showcase. Back to Michael. Circles, rocks inside. Reverses. Oh, oh, what a move by MJ. Yes, sir. But the Jazz still had to endure one final dagger, and not from who they had expected. Knocked away. Dennis got it back. Wheels, fires a three. Got it. Oh, man. Oh, oh, oh. Icing on the cake. Chicago. Up 2-0. Let's go to Salt Lake. We know we're going into Utah. The crowd's going to be real loud. These are countrymen pros. Talk about Stockton and Malone. They're going to be ready to play. We just got waxed tonight as a whole. And uh, now we go home. And now you go home and try to protect uh, your home court. Witnessing history in Salt Lake City. It has never happened before. The Utah Jazz, a home team in the NBA Finals. And Chicago doesn't know what windy is until the Jazz blow them away. The scene outside the Delta Center, frankly, a party. Let's go! Show me the title! I expect that crowd to be extremely loud, a little bit rowdy, and uh, ready to roll. There'll be 20,000 of them. You won't be able to hear yourself talk here. I mean, they absolutely go bananas. After this team early, get your spots early in your triangle so you can operate and yourself settled in. Play hard every play. The Bulls would love to take the 3 and 0, and the Jazz are in a desperate situation where they need a win for sure. With a thousand in attendance here tonight, and the millions watching around the world, ladies and gentlemen. Uh... As Game 3 was on the way, the Bulls were taken right out of their game plan by a Jazz team that was suddenly re-energized. Setting a new tone with their aggressive play, Utah came storming back into the series. Lovely and safe by Utah has come out more aggressive. What a shot, but a hit, although Pippen got a piece of it. Stock front court left. Stock down the middle to Melvin. Drive, hang, score. Count it. And he's fouled. Fast break basketball for the Utah Jazz. Carl, free throw line. Jump it up. Mark Foster has been a major factor. The Bulls seem frustrated tonight. Foster for three. Yes. The Jazz with their biggest lead of the game. Now the Bulls. They're getting to unravel a little bit. We're not on the boards. We're not getting second. DT defense is absolutely horrible. And things would only get worse for the Bulls, as Carl Malone would deliver one of his greatest playoff performances. Up top, Carl Malone, fake left, go right, power to the hoop, scoop it, score it! The ball, man! Malone simply took over the game, scoring 37 points and grabbing 10 rebounds. Carl Malone with a big time game. MVP! MVP! The champ of MVP, the Carl Malone. You gotta love it, baby! Standing ovation to the Utah Jazz, who have been able to get back into the series with a solid performance. You would hardly believe that this is the same team which dominated game two. It's either the altitude or they did not take the Jazz seriously. Phil, did the altitude or anything else bother Michael tonight? There is a certain factor about that. Usually the first run, these guys kind of acclimate themselves to it. But um, they're the ones that experience it. I, I was a little bit short of breath on the sideline, but not too bad. <laughs> if you get the ball down there and shaped up early enough, you can keep driving this team crazy because they'll be all over the ballpark. They're just going to run around and play defense all over. You just keep your space and keep going in behind. The Bulls had lost some of their momentum, but not their composure. Getting ready for Game 4, they calmly prepared to execute their strategy. But as Game 4 began, Chicago's carefully crafted plan was derailed by Utah's furious attack. Nothing is going smoothly at the offensive end for Chicago. Everything is a struggle, and you have to give a lot of that credit to the Jazz defense. The block by Ostertag, but Popper able to hang in. To Russell for three for the angle right. Yes! Jazz up 48-44. Though the Jazz continued their assault in the fourth quarter with Stockton setting up his teammates. Down the middle to Foster Shelka. However, the Bulls stuck to their game plan. 
Draw the defense. Move it on to the next guy. Chicago battled to stay within range, and as Game 4 entered the final stretch, they began one of their trademark runs. Did a six-foot jump shot. The Bulls doing a terrific job defensively, taking the Jazz out of its game. Rebounded by Pippen, and here comes George. Hustle away on the breakaway, and the Bulls lead by five. The Bulls had taken control of the game and seemed on the verge of putting the Jazz away. I mean, we're up five, and uh, we wanted to put a nail in the coffin. Uh, didn't work out that way. Once again, the resilient Jazz disrupted the Bulls' plans. Yes, John Stockton oh. makes it 71 69. George puts the move. Tom Russell. And Staging an emotional comeback, Utah would stun the usually unflappable champs. That is a tough call against Jordan here. Jordan, right side, Michael, up top, 20 footer, no good, rebound, Stockton, I have the curve it out, he's got it, Stockton the below, he scores, Jazz take the lead, incredible, the Jazz take the lead. Jordan outside with Russell there, fires the three, no, rattles out, Utah's gonna win this baby, this baby's over, Utah has won game four, and this series is deadlocked at two victories apiece. I mean, we came here to try to get one game, and that's still there ahead of us, so it's definitely the pivotal game of this series, and we feel like we still have our opportunity to go up. But the Bulls' confidence would soon give way to concern as they received a stunning blow in the hours leading up to Game 5. Before Game 5, I'm up at Marriott. 10, 10.30 at night. I'm hungry. You find one pizza place open. One. Five guys delivering one pizza. I put this pizza down and I, I said, I got a bad feeling about this. I eat the pizza all by myself. Nobody else eats. I wake up about 2.30, throwing up left and right. Now the big story here tonight concerning Michael Jordan's physical conditions. He is suffering from flu-like symptoms. Uh, his status is uncertain. This is Carl Malone tonight. He has to show the world just how great a player he is. Marv, the Jazz, they have to win tonight if their dream is going to come true. The bad news for the Bulls, the stomach virus that has hit Michael Jordan, and you wonder just how much, how long, and how hard he'll be able to go. Never in the history of the NBA since they've gone to the 2-3-2 format has the home team won all three of the game. The Utah Jazz are favored to do exactly that. I don't know if Michael can carry the Bulls on the road against the Jazz. This is the finals, and this team is for real, and he needs help. And unless he gets it, I don't believe they're going to win game five. With Jordan stricken by illness, the Bulls would find themselves walking into a lion's den as they faced the surging Jazz, the league's MVP, and one of the NBA's most frenzied crowds. Stockton looking. Whipped inside. Malone goes up, counts, and a foul. And early on, Chicago's worst fears would be realized as Utah would explode out of the gate. So the crossover went off, visibly shaken by the flu symptoms. Malone runs it down with a good hustle. Anderson, baseline, a slam. This is an embarrassment for Chicago. The rebound, Steve Kerr. Kerr, I had to Tony, and he threw it away. Two coaches never saw Wasn't it coming. Looking. This is going to be a blowout. And things would go from bad to worse for Chicago and their exhausted leader as the Jazz storm to a 16-point lead in the second quarter. But if you let this get any more out of reach now, that you're at a point where, especially with Michael Ailing, you're in danger of putting yourself in a position where you have no chance to win the game. Jump to Michael, MJ, against Russell to the free throw line. And Michael Jordan able to line drive it home for his second field goal. Despite his weakened condition, Jordan single-handedly kept his bulls in contention. Jordan puts moves on Hornacek. This the best spurt of the night. And the steal by Jordan. Behind the back on Russell, he turned it around. By Jordan. 
But with the greatest player of all time running on fumes, the question remained whether the Bulls could stay within range. And before halftime, the Jazz would provide an ominous answer. Russell's open on court, court. Slam! Oh! A big time slam! Utah will take a lead in the division. Talk about that uphill fight, especially in front of a crowd like this and a team as good as Utah. Sometimes you carry the fight to them, but you just don't have enough energy. Michael still doesn't feel very well. The Bulls need other guys to step in and step up. Utah just playing unflustered basketball. No matter what you do to them, they run right back at you. Throughout the second half, the fatigued Jordan would somehow keep the Bulls in the game. MJ, Michael for three, come on! Yes, sir! MJ a tray and... Game five had now developed into a tense back and forth battle. On a sec, got Jordan in the air. Here's the shot, good. This is gonna be real tough down the stretch. This fourth quarter is gonna be a war. Jordan fires for three, yes. And he's tied the game at 77. Jordan is absolutely exhausted and worn out. Michael is dead he, on his feet. Exhausted. This is where Utah's been great with the game close. Shot clock at four, Marsh. On yes! their feet here at the Delta Center. Here is Jordan outside. Chicago down three. Puts it down, drives the lane, a running eight footer, yes. And it's a one point Utah lead. Michael Jordan, incredible. As this pivotal contest reached its waning moments, the Jazz would once again look to seize control of the series. Though the Bulls' leader would not let it happen. He's the guttiest performance maybe all time. And all eyes here are going to be on Michael Jordan. Put on top, Pippen wants it. Wants to go on Harnesek. Demanded the ball. Back Michael. Open three. Yes! Oh. They lead it. 38 points for the King. Yeah. Stuck a dagger at him with a three. Yes! Jordan's crushing three-pointer would finish off the Jazz in Game 5 and cap off one of the most unforgettable performances in NBA history. Classic performance by the flu-ridden Michael Jordan. That he gave us today was unbelievable. You know, and his teammates, we really appreciate the way that he steps up and shows his leadership for our ball club. I didn't want to give up. You know, no matter how sick I was, or how tired I was, or how, you know, low on energy I was, I felt an obligation you know, to my team, to the city of Chicago to go out and give that extra effort. Tonight, the curtain drops as the greatest show on earth performs for the last time. The drive for five will end right where it started as the Bulls will be crowned kings of the hill once again. You got enough to end it tonight? I do. I hope everybody else does too. First of all, I think you all know we're anxious about this game. This game in which we're all a little nervous about going out and performing well and doing the right thing. They want to get this done tonight. They don't want to have to go to a game seven where almost anything can happen. Don't think about every, anything but the play ahead. The next play, the play you're in, your mind and focus. We don't plan on just going out. Not quietly, not easy. So you can guarantee it's going to be a war tonight. If the Bulls could win the title tonight, Chicago would become the third franchise to win five titles in a decade. The greatest athlete of our time hopes tonight is a coronation of the greatest dynasty the NBA has seen in three decades. But the Jazz were determined to write their own chapter and not allow a coronation at their expense. Malone from Stockton. The Bulls started slowly and Utah took advantage of Utah that. Utah in a hurry. The Bulls kind of stood around. Hold a sec. Yes. Look out, Chicago. It's not going to be easy wrapping it up tonight. The Bulls have not answered the challenge. Carl Malone with 12 points. With Utah leading as the first quarter ended, the Bulls coach Phil Jackson searched for answers. But Jordan refused to let the frustrated Bulls lose their poise. Midway through the second quarter, with Chicago trailing by 10, he would begin to lead them back. Here's Jordan getting the step. The Bulls picked up their energy and started to find a rhythm in the second half. Foster firing and missed it badly in the rebound. Brian Williams whipped ahead to Pippen. He'll dunk the ball. Great look up the court by Brian Williams. Mid-third quarter, the Bulls were making a run and the United Center was rocking. MJ, hangs, fires, scores! Yes, bring it! The tenacious Jazz, however, led by Malone, Stockton, and Hornacek were answering every Chicago run with one of their own. 
Stockton with the beautiful move to Beast. Biggest lead of game six. It's a 10 point advantage for the Utah Jazz. In the waning moments of the third quarter, Utah still refused to relinquish its lead. And with the game slipping away, there was little doubt what was going through the minds of the Bulls and their leader, Michael Jordan. From day one, you want to end up playing in June and winning a championship. And it's a lot of bumps in the road. So we understand what it takes to get to this level. By no means do we want to give this up and to win championships. This is a dream. Now, the dream is, is to sustain this as long as you're still playing the game of basketball. And with Jordan setting the tone, the Bulls would show the resolve of champions, ending the third quarter with Judd Butchler burying a three to help give Chicago the momentum. Three! Butchler has to fire it! <laughs> what a great shot by Judd Butchler! The Bulls trailed by nine early in the fourth quarter, but went on a 10-0 run to take their first lead since the opening minutes when Scottie Pippen and Steve Kerr hit two three-pointers. Crowd back into the game on their feet throughout. The and the bush corner. Kerr for three. Come yes! on! Chicago needs it on Stevie Kerr's way. The Jazz, however, regained the lead, and the game remained one possession until the final score. Jordan. In the final minutes, Jordan's fadeaway jumper extended the Bulls' lead to three before Brian Russell hit a three-pointer with 144 left to tie the game at 86. Here comes three from Russell. Oh, yes! Oh. An enormous shot by Brian Russell. He's tied the game at 86. The Bulls have it with 28 seconds left. In the final seconds with the score tied and the game on the line, this classic series would hinge on one dramatic play. Michael knew what was coming earlier in the series. In a very similar situation late in the game, John Stockton had come over and doubled him and stolen the ball, which helped seal the win for Utah. And he mumbled something like, hey, Steve, hey, Steve, be ready. He knew the camera was always on him, you know, and I'm like oblivious. He comes off, I'll be ready. Out on their feet here at the United Center. It is Michael Jordan time. Six seconds, five. Michael in traffic to Kerr. 15 footers. Very yeah. the jumper. Second remaining in the fourth quarter. Russell to inbound. Look it, look it, look it. Skip the cross. Pip in the steal. Scott it. Saves it to tie it. He runs it. The Bulls win. The Bulls win. They do it, the drive for five. And pandemonium reigns in the United Center. Yeah. Yeah. Tonight, Steve Kerr earned his wings, you know, from my perspective, you know, because I have faith in him and he believed in himself and I passed him the ball. And tonight, Steve Kerr earned his wings and I'm very happy for Steve Kerr. An extraordinary effort. Congratulations, Chicago. Congratulations, Chicago Bulls. Congratulations, these spectacular players. One of the hardest things in sports to try to do is defend a championship that you have. The Bulls have been able to do it. Repeat. Wow, champions. five times in seven years. They are the best in the world. I want to take my hat off to the two leaders on this team, Scotty and Michael. Jordan finished game six with 39 points to go along with 11 rebounds and four assists. And he was named finals MVP for the fifth time, capping another legendary performance in NBA finals history. Congratulations, Michael Jordan, 1997 finals MVP. It's hard to take this MVP by myself. He's got to take half of it. I take the trophy, he may get the call. <laughs> Let's go. It looks like they're celebrating New Year's Eve here in the United Center. There we go. Now we're filming you, filming me, filming us at our uh, annual uh, year end party. I'm just telling you, Scotty, you guys, good job. Oh, thank you. You guys awesome. stay competitive all the way. You know, last year. I, I wanted to kiss my wife, and I actually accidentally reached for Lindsey Bushler. So this year, I guess I should actually reach for Yeah. And tell Chelsea, tell Chelsea congratulations, and I hope she enjoys college. This is my fifth time. I do it anytime. time. I do it six, seven, eight, nine. Then I will do it again. A lot of people have been asking me about the shot the other night, and there have been some misconceptions about what actually happened. I wanted to clear it up. 
When we called timeout with 25 seconds to go, we, we went into the huddle and Phil told Michael, he said, Michael, I want you to take the last shot. And Michael said, you know, Phil, I don't feel real comfortable in these situations. So maybe we ought to go in another direction. Why don't we go to Steve? So I thought to myself, well, I guess I got to bail Michael out again. Anyway, the shot went in and that's my story and, and I'm sticking to it. Hopefully, come 1998, you guys can go out and celebrate and go back to every city and say we won number six, hopefully number seven, number eight, number nine, number 10. Despite Jordan's wishes, the 1997-98 season was under a big question mark for the Bulls and one of its key players. We're entitled to defend what we have until we lose it. Scotty, Jerry Krause is not ruling out a trade for you. Does that bother you? No. If you want to look at this from a business thing, have a sense of respect for the people who have laid the groundwork so that you could be a profitable organization. You're very underpaid, though, as one of the top players. What do you think your value is in terms My of... My day will come. My day will come. I'm done here, you know what I'm saying? 